drop your questions in that Q and A box. Uh, and any chat, you know, various comments, remarks you have about the session today, you can put in that chat box as well. Um, and then Jeff will be getting to all the questions at the end of the session. So, without further ado, Jeff, I will hand it over to you. Well, thank you very much. I'm Jeff Coombs. I'm the president of Crunch. We are Power Made Simple. We started about five years or so trying to make it much easier to do survey data analysis and delivery. We're Power Made Simple. It's an online platform where you can drag and drop to easily create cross tabs and graphs and build dashboards. And we have grown to about 60,000 users, people dragging and drop doing things very easily. Our biggest push lately is everything we do in the GUI to automate it. We're providing self-service to market researchers and to insights professionals and brands and their stakeholders. And now we're moving towards automating everything. And we're gonna show you all about that. When we talk about automation, we want to make sure people modernize, then automate. It's not about uh, manufacturing buggy whips quicker. It's about moving to an automobile, of course. So what does a buggy whip look like in the market research world? It's this. It's a 395-page tab book. Each tab book has 10,000 cells and so a million data points, uh, pieces of information. We're working here at Crunch with one of the large uh, market research agencies who want to modernize or, and automate. And they gave us a 400 point questionnaire asking, can we, can we, can we, can we, can we? And basically it was from a DP person who wanted to create their tabs faster. That's not our idea of modernization. That's really trying to make more buggy whips faster. The old way you do trackers is, is with those Excel tabs. You come out of the field, you get a first set of tabs pretty quickly in a day or two. Within a week, there's quality checks, a lot of manual checks. You start to create some PowerPoints. Uh, you go back, the market researchers are doing that. They go back and forth to DP. Then by week two, they create a bunch of PowerPoint slides, off, often the hundred or hundreds, and maybe 20 that's are, that are curated, and eventually they deliver a presentation. This is really the old way to do things. Um, the, the, if you're just trying to do this faster, that's small thinking. Can I get my tabs faster is really thinking forest, not trees. We're, we're going to suggest that you change the game. If you're thinking of saving the planet, you don't want to get higher gas mileage. You want to have longer battery, battery life so electric cars can go 500 miles. You have to really think differently. You want to modernize for online self-service. A market researcher wants to find insights quickly. An insights person wants to deliver online and they want to do it to that business person, whether it be in finance or a product person, and they want to do it very quickly. So I'm, we're going to start by giving you a demo to show what the modern world looks like. With interactive analysis, we're going to, uh, to have all the data in a tracker database stored online in a columnar database in Ireland with a nice GUI interface that Chris Jones, a product a person in charge of dashboards from Crunch will show you. He'll drag and drop to build some cross tabs, visualizations. He'll show you how to save interesting reports and charts in a deck. He'll build a dashboard. He'll automate the, or he'll show you how to create PowerPoints from that deck or from the dashboard. So rather than the process of having to work with these huge long tabs and then by, by hand look for the interesting insights by hand building a PowerPoint, he is going to show the modern world of online self-service. So let me um, turn it over to, to um, Chris here. Thanks, Jeff. Like almost everything in Crunch, analyzing a data set is done using simple drag and drop. All my questions from my survey are arranged into these neat folders here. 
and to view a simple table of one, all I need to do is click it. Now, if I want to see that variable crossed by another, to see it over time perhaps, I simply click and drag that wave variable, and as I start to do so, you can see that I'm presented with these drop zones. Each is labelled to tell me what to expect, so I'm going to bring this wave variable up here and drop it in this columns drop zone. And that's all I have to do to create a crosstab. But perhaps I want to see these results not for all respondents, but just for those who are from the US. For that, I just take this country variable here and start to drag that, and this time I'm going to place it in this filter by drop zone and let go. And then I'll choose the USA option, and now I'm just looking at the results for the US respondents. And remember that Crunch is calculating everything in real time here. Nothing is pre-calculated which means that there's no limit to the combinations you can create. So far, we've been just looking at tables, but Crunch supports a variety of other visualization types, including these interactive line graphs, which are perfect for trackers, especially with great additional features, such as smoothing, otherwise known as rolling averages, and these confidence interval bands. And if you want to drill down even further, you can add another variable to what we call tabs, which allow you to quickly flick between different categories of that variable and see the impact on your results. Once you've found an analysis that you're interested in, you can save it to what we call a deck. Analyses saved to a deck can be exported to both Excel tables and fully editable PowerPoint presentations. And a deck of analyses can become a dashboard in just a few clicks. And I'll show you that in a moment. But first, let's have a look at that PowerPoint export. As you can see, PowerPoint exports from Crunch use fully native PowerPoint objects, just as if you had made those analyses yourself in PowerPoint, enabling you to make any changes you wish. You can even upload your own PowerPoint template so that the exports come out into your look and feel. Back to Crunch, and let's save this analysis to this existing deck. We can see it here at the bottom. I'm now going to jump to that dashboard, and when I scroll to the bottom, you can see that same analysis now here on that dashboard. That's all I had to do to add it, just save it to the deck. But maybe I don't want it to be here on this first tab, so let's go into edit mode and choose to move it to this media consumption tab instead. There we go. But perhaps I want it over here and perhaps a little wider, like so. Laying out dashboards in Crunch is so simple. Just click and drag to reposition, and drag these corners to resize. That's all there is to it. We'll see more from Crunch later, but for now, back to Jeff. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Chris. Let's go forward. Thanks, Jeff. Look. No, thank you. So um, that's the modern world. It's self-service. And that's what we want to automate. You want to automate getting the data out of the data collection platform quickly into crunch. And then you want to deliver it to the insights professionals very quickly so they can do the kind of drag and drop analysis that Chris showed. And you want to deliver interactive dashboards to even more people. At crunch, for example, uh, uh, the users are free and we're trying to democratize survey data analysis. And uh, so we're trying to get as many users with eyes on the data as possible. An example would be one of our uh, customers is the European Climate Foundation. And they're moving to a new strategy called audience driven strategy. They've got 30 analysts that they're delivering lots of surveys from 12 different countries to. And when they go to see a constituent to do some lobbying about trying to save the planet, those those analysts are able to quickly on their own self-service go and figure out what are that particular person's uh, constituents thinking so they can give them uh, specific information about the surveys. And you can still get the PowerPoints that you want, whether you're an insights professionals or someone using a dashboard. But today, you're really the first group that is going to be seeing crunch automation, a brand new part of crunch that can do, can script everything that's in the GUI. 
so that whether you're working with the data and putting it to crunch, doing an analysis and building reports and graphs, exporting to PowerPoint or building a dashboard, you can do that all with scripting. So the GUI part is making it easy. The scripting is making it very quick to deliver and it's end to end so that you can, uh, we aren't a data collection platform, but when you're working with a decipher or you're working with Qualtrics or whomever, you can use a script and a pre-written script to make building the analysis and the dashboards and the PowerPoints really quickly, really quick. So you're delivering online dashboards, but you can still deliver your standard reports in, in, uh, in an automated way. So if you're, a, if you're a market research firm, you can deliver more quickly to your, your uh, customers who are the insights professionals. If you're the insights professionals, you'll get things uh, a lot more quickly. You'll still be able to do that gooey drag and drop and you'll get it quickly. It's a different animal when you're, creating a cross tab as to when you're importing into crunch. So when we talk about modernizing in order to automate, it's important that you pick a modern data collection platform. If you've got one that doesn't have an API, for example, crunch has an API and we hook data collection to crunch via an API and then write crunch automation to stream the data between the two. If you've got an old school one and you're having to export the data to SPSS, bring it into crunch, that's the least automatic and not as much metadata flows through. So it's not as easy to get crunch up and ready, running. If you're working with a more modern system like Confirmit or Decipher, that can be very automated. And we can even work with the most modern uh, um, data collection fielding softwares like YouGovs, where it can be completely automated and every single response automatically flows into crunch as it is uh, fielded, as it's completed. So data processing with crunch no, no longer needs to be with data files. It can be instant, it can be complete, it can be automatic. And uh, so what we'd like to do now is show a demo. We've got Matt Steele here. He is our uh, vice president of customer success. And he's going to show you how crunch automation, the new scripting language from crunch can be used to automate everything that you saw in the GUI. We're now going to look at the concept of automation in crunch. With Crunch, you can automate from data collection into preparing a data set all the way through to making dashboards. I'm going to show you how you can use Crunch automation to do these tasks. Consider the dashboard that we had from before. In fact, let's switch dashboard to a more complete dashboard, such as this one here. I can manipulate things in the dashboard as an editor by clicking edit and going to edit a tile. So rather than having communications channel recall, I could change it to say add channel recall and then click save. That changes the information in the tile. But equally, I could go into the crunch automation script for that tile and change this to be something else such as advertising and then click Update Script. And you can see the tile is updated to reflect that change in the title. But equally, changes I make in the title will change the script. So if I go and edit the title now, and let's say by month, I just change it to time period monthly, this will, be, this will be reflected in the underlying script. Let's go see the script. And you can see time period colon monthly has been inserted into the script. So what we're doing here when we're building dashboards in terms of content is we're actually changing the underlying script for that particular dashboard. You can download the entire script, not just one tile, and see it here. You see that the first command is creating the dashboard. Then there's a tab 
to give you the main summary, i.e. the tabs, and other tabs are the structuring of each of the tiles. Okay, now let's look at how the data set gets set up with Crunch Automation. So we've shown you how this part of dashboard creation can be automated. Now let's show you how you can um, automate the data setup from a data collection platform. I'm just going to duplicate this tab, close this data set, and into this folder I'm going to um, add a new data set and I'm going to import from Decipher. Just to go back for a moment, you notice that we can we can import from a number of different data collection platforms such as SurveyMonkey, Decipher, Confirmant and Qualtrics, as well as different data file types such as uh, CSV, SPSS, Parquet and SSS. But downloading directly from uh, a data collection platform brings over the most metadata and thus increases automation. So I've connected with an API key to Decipher to my Decipher account and I can see the list of surveys I've got in there. I'm going to select this particular uh, study here has 13 questions and 2003 responses. I'm then going to hit import. And it sets up the data set. You'll see it's brought over all the question text for me. I, as an editor, can go and set things up in the GUI to modify it. So, for example, I might take the question text and put it as uh, uh, the description and say give the title of this particular variable gender and click save and you can see that's now reflected in the variable tree and in the variable. But I can also use crunch automation. You see each variable has what's called an alias which is a computational tag. This age question has the tag S2. So I'm going to go over to crunch automation and I'm going to type in a very simple crunch automation command. Change title in S2 with age groups. And then the next command will be change description in S2 with what is your age. And then I'm going to click run. And you can see that's been uh, implemented. If I go back to the crunch automation, you can see there's an executed history of different scripts that have been run that shows, um, so I have a complete history of the, of the scripting that I've done. That can be useful if you want to replicate a data set set up, uh, for example, in a tracking study. But I also have a complete script ready to go. I'm just going to go into my demo scripts and I'm going to pull open the decipher text file that has a series of commands here in a text file changing the titles, changing the description and organizing things into folders. Of course we can do more uh, complete and advanced setup but then I'm just doing a whole bunch of commands at once here to make a neat tidy data set. A neat and tidy data set is one that has folders and titles and all the variable types are set up correctly. This makes it a self-service buffet that researchers can go to for their analysis and reporting. So. From that text file before, I've copied over all my crunch automation and I'm going to paste it here and then click run script. And you can see the entire uh, data set has been set up. Further to this, I can automatically create a dashboard as well. I said before how you can create dashboards with GUI drag and drop and get the underlying code. Well, I've now got a, some text that defines a dashboard here, uh, create dashboard, tab home, title, tile, and so forth. I'm going to copy all this text, pop it into Crunch Automation here, and then click Run Script. Great. We just hit Refresh, and you can see it's created that dashboard for me here automatically, and all the bits and pieces are in place, including tabs, including the filter tiles. For more information on Crunch Automation, Go to help.crunch.io. We have a whole section devoted to crunch automation, but also a definitive guide for data processes. So if you go to the definitive guide for importing and preparing data, 
you can see all the tasks that a DP department may need to go through to set up a data set, including doing things in the GUI and via crunch automation. It's a convenient lookup for you for any particular task, so you can navigate to the right command in crunch automation. So, crunch allows you to automate the workflow all the way from data collection through to dashboard creation. Thanks for watching. We're getting a bunch of uh, questions. I'll uh, just say you, we'll do them at the end. But yes, you can embed this uh, in, in your website. There's a way to do that. Also, someone asked, how can you clean the data? You can actually build into crunch automation uh, a lot of ways to actually clean the data. So, But we'll, we'll get back to that, those questions. So automation from data all the way to uh, dashboards. Um, how, how is this being used in the real world? There's a company called PSL, for example. They they do surveys with doctors for pharmaceutical companies about how their their drugs are being used. They have built dashboards for a while with a GUI drag and drop. We demoed crunch automation to their market researchers, not their DP people, their market researchers, who now realize that even though crunch drag and drop um, dashboards are far faster than any other kind of scripting language now because they can save the scripting language and use them across their their different projects they can deliver those dashboards with far less uh, manpower far, far fewer people hours and so they're very excited about that and what they're realizing with crunch automation is that they can get their results faster but they're not delivering to their customers faster, which they could do. They're actually analyzing the data, spending more time to find insights, and then they are uh, then they are delivering the insights faster to their customers. So if you've got a project, maybe it's a tracker, you can start the week prior, partway through fielding, because you're streaming the data in with crunch automation, you get the data set set up. You can even see some initial results, the first insights, before you even finished fielding. And then day one hour on when you're done, you can deliver to your market researchers, to your insights, professional customers, or to your stakeholders, if you're in a brand, the standard reports, the dashboards. And you can even allow all of them as they find new insights to download their own PowerPoints. And so, um, for example, um, at a large uh, financial services company, think Visa, think Amex, they wanted to do their own analysis very quickly out of fielding and not have to go back to the market researchers. And they are now doing that uh, with Crutch. And so by day two, you can deliver uh, full uh, insights uh, to, the, to the customers. Um, you can use Crunch, and it's used a lot for omnibus studies. We've got uh, companies such as uh, Opinion Matters, Directional Research, YouGov, Protege. I don't know if you've known any of these uh, companies, but they, um, they, they're they quick turn studies, and they do lots of them every day, 24-hour turnaround, and they love Crunch Automation for automating these kinds of quick turn, smaller studies. And they don't just deliver... Uh, PowerPoints anymore. They deliver online to their customers. And with crunch automation now for dashboards, they can not just uh, deliver PowerPoints, but they deliver it online for their customers. Uh, you, We also have customers doing end-to-end do-it-yourself with crunch automation. So we don't do the fielding, but uh, the, the customers have their own fielding. Uh, so for example, uh, YouGov has their own in-house system called Griffin. Uh, Protege uses Decipher. Uh, and the customers go online. This is complete automation. Uh, the customers define their own surveys. They pick a panel and then they field it. The data streams into crunch and boom, you, you push analyze and you're able to analyze the data. You get standard reports. Uh, and now you can even have uh, dashboards uh, delivered automatically. So we have market research companies who do all of these do it yourself they do trackers with crunch and crunch automation they do the on the bus studies um some of these companies are growing at 30 percent per year because of the advantages they're they're um, giving to their customers some large brands uh think of um uh, we're not supposed to say customer names, so I'll tell categories. So think of large uh, power companies like mobile, like Chevron. And also I talked about the financial services company. They want 
all their data in one place. So they're putting it in crunch, stored in that uh, crunch columnar database, which was purpose built for survey data. It's unique uh, so that you get that sub second response you saw. Crunch is essentially a business intelligence tool for survey data. The tableaus, the business objects, the uh, clicks of the world can't handle survey data, Crunch can. And because we have a special database for it, we can do what those, um, those generic BI tools can't. They can't deal with missing this. They can't deal with, uh, uh, they can't deal with waiting. They don't understand those concepts. And, um, and so these big vendors that I talk about are put out big uh, RFPs and they want all the data to be flowing into, into a, a, a product like Crunch. And then they want to make sure there's good integration between the fielding tool and their reporting and visualization tool. So they're actually looking for modern on both ends and make sure that they integrate well. And so the, the data collection platforms, the market research firms use, need to use technology with an API that can integrate closely with Crunch. And they're asking us for who, who's a good platform to work with. And then they're doing prototypes uh, with us to make sure that it, that it all works. So a good reason to use Crunch, I guess I get about 30 seconds here for a little uh, ad. It's incredibly easy to use. It's fast, as you've seen, and it's collaborative. As I said, all the users are free, so lots of people uh, can use it. It's also fast because not just in the response from a, uh, for a query, but also in terms of deploying it and getting your survey data ready and available as quickly as possible. We've been growing quite click quickly. We've got over a thousand customers. Uh, we're tens of thousands of users. We're probably approaching a hundred thousand now. We can deal with the largest data sets because we, we have this special database that, that sits in Ireland. And our biggest data sets are millions of rows and actually hundreds of thousands of columns. So um, I think that is the end of our presentation. With that, I think we have got a few minutes, not too many. Um, can we alter the PowerPoint template is a question. Yes, absolutely, you can. You can apply a template with your brand, your customer's brand, any brand like that. The downloads for PowerPoint are also editable. Uh, editable, so they're actually objects, Microsoft objects. So you can you can change them and edit them. Uh, sure. Uh, what's the difference between Crunch and Force to Visualization? Um, I would say Crunch is a lot easier to use. I would also say the different components of Crunch are integrated in one and in one place. I would also say that because we have a columnar database, you're going to see a lot faster. Uh, a lot faster response times to handle large data sets. They just won't handle large data sets. Uh, there's a number of other ones. Christine, what other questions did we have? Have we gotten? Yes. Um, one of the questions we have from Lewis is how do you clean and quality check the raw data uh, before processing? Does that still need to be handmade? Uh, it, it it, it generally doesn't. There's a number of ways to do that. You can do consistency checks. You, you nothing. A, a big reason people go with this is because anything by hand is slow. It's manual. It's error prone. So they want want to get completely out of manual mode. Uh, there are there are ways to do checks of within Crunch Automation. You can do some checks within Crunch Automation. You can also call outside. Um, tools or outside technology so that as it flows from Decipher or whatever uh, into Crunch, we can then call out because of the API and call in somebody like, for example, Code It. If you want to recode some uh, open ends, you can call out to Code It, recode, bring them back in, put them into the database. So uh, there are ways to do it. Uh, pricing strategy, we charge similarly to the way market research companies charge by the amount of data that you input in any period of time. So if you're paying a lot for a study because it's a huge tracker, you'll pay more for Crunch than if you've got a teeny little omnibus study. And users are free at Crunch, always free. What else do we have, uh, Christine? I think we have 10 seconds. All right, we have one question about automation, which is if you have all this scripting done, what happens if you add a new 
wave or new country to the tracker. So you, if you've got a dashboard, say for one uh, country, you can copy it over. You just need to change the name of the country and the suffix in the code. Uh, if uh, you have a new wave, it has new variables. They're automatically entered. Uh, um, if you've deleted some variables, they can be automatically deleted and you can go in and change the scripting if you need to. So it's an incredibly efficient way to make changes. And I think Kara is going to tell me I'm over time right now. So. No worries. It's, uh, I'm happy to see so many questions. It looks like you're doing a great job getting through all of them. Um, and I'll make sure you have a copy of the rest of the ones you didn't get to touch on. Um, for anybody else who has more questions or maybe miss the first half of the presentation, it will be available on demand. And there's also a really big green button on this page that says book time with me, where you can actually just book uh, a demo with Jeff. So Jeff, thank you so much for your time. I uh, really appreciate it. And we'll see everybody in the next session. Bye. Thank you, everyone.